Hello, my name is Neil Ange from Skyway Software, and this is the second part of a series of Spring Webflow screencasts, um, which are reviewing or covering the uh, Spring Webflow capabilities of My Eclipse for Spring. In the previous uh, screencast, we left off with a working Webflow, which I will open up right here. And this Webflow basically had two views, and one view was transitioning to the other whenever the next event was fired and from this view when the back event was fired um, you would return back to the first view so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and uh, tie this flow to some uh, services that I have on the back end now I don't have any services created so we're going to create a simple service real quick so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the spring DSL and select new model package and I will create a special package just for my services. It's not a requirement but it's just how most people like to separate their different different application components. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish here and this will create the org.examples.services flow within my project. And from here I can right click on here and select, select new service and I will call this the test service. I will select finish and then finally I'm going to add an operation to the service so I'll select right click new operation and we'll call this something like do something and I'll make sure that I'm selecting the right service there and I will hit finish now I have my service is created now I just need to go in and actually implement it so if I expand this and I take a look at the org.example services in my generated folder this was created for me when I created the model package and here was the code that was generated uh, for me from the Spring DSL. So I'm actually going to open up the implementation of the service and within here I'm just going to put in something simple that we can recognize and verify that we're actually uh, make that we're actually invoking the service from our webflow. So I'm going to do something here very simple like simple out print line and we will do a classic hello world example. All right. My service is now, my spring service is completely implemented and now I'm going to go back to my flow and I want to actually configure this flow to use that service uh, when I transition from here to here. So the way that I can do this is by expanding this little icon right here and I will reconfigure this and I'm going to tell it to actually do an evaluation and this evaluation will be test service dot do something. And I will go ahead and hit enter here. I am now done. I will save this flow and then I will simply redeploy my application. Run as my Eclipse server application. And once again, like I did in the first part of the series, I will put in the URL for my flow, which is called my first flow and I'll get my JSP page next when I click next I expect my uh, transition as we specified in here to fire off this call to my service so and if that is done correctly I should see a message in my console down here um, when, for, from what I implemented so I'm gonna go ahead and click next and lo and behold there's my hello world so I have ver validated that I've actually fired off that service or I've, I called that service now that service was very nonsensical really didn't do anything but if I had actually implemented something more meaningful or something more business oriented it was certainly would have executed it as well so that is the basics for actually doing spring webflow and actually calling you know your services and this is where the scaffolding capability in Skyway is very powerful because what you can actually do is when you're scaffolding your application if you expect your application to be a Spring Webflow application you can still scaffold all the services and the data layer the persistence layer of your application and be able to use those from your Spring Webflow just like I showed you from here so we provide you a very powerful editor for actually allowing you to maintain your flows and of course if you wanted to you could certainly go from here and edit it directly using the XML and any change that you make in here will be reflected um, back into the diagram itself but the point is is the diagram is a lot easier than having to do the XML associated with this by looking at this XML you really can't see the flow of the application from here you, it, you can and there's a lot of powerful capabilities in here so hopefully that was helpful if you have any questions please don't hesitate to post uh, questions on the my eclipse for spring forums thank you very much